Now, I'm going to talk with us that it takes courage to confront the situations of life. We are in a war. And if you don't know it, know it today. We are in a war to reclaim the soul of our country. We are in a war to reclaim our inheritance. There are certain individuals with their satanic strengths who have vowed that they will not let you go. And we are saying we must go. We must go to serve our God. We have gone through pain for a long time. The Lord have allowed the pains and the afflictions to come in our way so that we can learn the lesson. Nobody handed us over to Buhari but ourselves. We're the ones that enthroned that Pharaoh. And everybody is bleeding and crying. But God is going to use a group of men and women. God didn't use the 600,000 Israelites to bring Israel out. God used one man. And if I have one person here who is going to be used of God, only you should shout the loudest amen. amen. Now, before you take your seat, I know there is an announcement. Please, um, later on, you will get the full detail. Some people are using my name to collect money from people. So, number one, I have never written to anybody to ask for money. Number two, so many people are making different Facebooks with my name different page El Buba using my picture and even I, I, I saw some of the comment the people were making you will actually think it's me they said yes my daughter you can pay the money into this account <laughs> and they send the account and the people say okay daddy I'm going to do it now but I tell you Anyone using my name to take money from people, their stomach, their stomach will hurt them to death until they repent. I'm telling you this. You don't use my name to defraud people. So all the Facebook pages, the ICT unit, they are collapsing. It was the name, or, yeah? Come, come. What's the name? Which name are we using now? Prophet Israel Buba, which is verified. Any other account using El Buba, you say El Buba. If it is not it, Prophet Israel El Buba, verified account. And even on that account, I don't make monetary demand. Anywhere you see anybody saying that I'm asking for money online is a criminal. So I, I want to counsel you that it is time you also wake up to invade the social media platform. If you follow the message I gave that was spread by one blogger called Jesus versus Muhammad, the Muslims all over the world are bombarding that video because they have been crippled, they have been paralyzed, and they saw the response of so many other people turning over to Jesus on that video, short video clip. But you realize that the church people are so quiet. 
instead of engaging them with scriptures and Quranic verses because that is the medium of evangelism. As of a few days ago, there were over one point something million response. One point what? 1.4 million followership on that video. So can you imagine you have opportunity to reach out to over one point something million? Lift up your two hands and said, I receive unusual grace in the name of Jesus to take responsibility to counter the forces of darkness. We receive the power to be in charge in Jesus' name. Give the Lord a big hand of praise. Thank you. Be seated, please. In the book of Exodus 29 and verse 2, the Bible says that everything about life depends on leadership. Whether it is your personal leadership life, your family leadership life, or a nation. The Bible says when a righteous man is in power, the people rejoice. And when the wicked is in power, the people mourn. So everything in life, whether it is family, it is ministry, it is business, depends on leadership. Exodus chapter 1 and verse 8 to 14. Exodus chapter 1 and verse 8 to 14. You see how God had to raise a leader to free the children of Israel. As long as Moses did not show up and respond to the call of God, the people of God will remain in captivity. So the freedom of a people, the liberty of a people is determined by leadership. By leadership. So what is leadership? What is leadership? Leadership is an act or is an act of motivating a group of people to act towards achieving a goal. Leadership is an influence that steers others up into achieving a specific goal. Leadership is the capacity to drive a people to achieve a common goal. Leadership is the ability to awaken the consciousness of a people, to awake from their sleep, to realize their state and also pursue the goal of accomplishing a dream. Nehemiah chapter 2 and verse 20. Nehemiah chapter 2 and verse 20, there you see that Nehemiah came as a covenant minister and servant. And the Bible says he was able to drive the people to rebuild the broken world. Nehemiah chapter 4. If you read from verse 6 to 23, there you see again Nehemiah presenting the capacity of the people to do the work, changing their story by themselves. Leadership is the ability to be able to drive yourself to change the story of your life. So in, the, in a time like this, we need men and women that are brave, brave leaders, brave men and women are those that step up, those that are courageous to confront situations even when it is dangerous. Situations that others will be afraid of to confront, they rise up to confront that situation in order to change their story. We see that leadership ability in a young man that was in his teenage age, teenage years we may call it, in his youthful time, the young man called David. David saw a situation and he was willing to take leadership, take responsibility to change the situation. For Samuel chapter 17, verse 45 to 47. The Bible says, and there you see, for Samuel 17, 45 to 47, David had the gods in the midst of danger at the detriment of his life to confront the Goliath in order to free God's people from days and weeks of intimidation. 
Brave leaders are those that stand up for what they believe in. Brave men and women, they stand up for what they believe in. What they know is right and they do not back down. Why? They don't back down because of the consequences that may come on their way. For disobeying unrighteous system. They know that it doesn't matter what, they cannot back down. They cannot bow. They cannot give in because they need to save the situation in a time that they found themselves. It is so amazing to see so much of compromise, especially within the, the Christian folks. How people can easily just bow to unrighteous systems. Isn't it a shame for anybody to even come out publicly to sit on the table to say the reason why we are going for Shetima as a vice president is because of the things he has done while he was a governor in Borno State for the Christians. The question I ask, what did he do? Just for a muzzle of bread. It's so painful to me as a leader to watch how people can mortgage their future just for how much? 100,000 naira. Look at all of them. We were in the cassock. After they were all done, they went to under the tree and they were sharing the money. How much were they giving? You can't be sharing millions. Huh? 30,000 30, naira. 20,000 naira. Daniel chapter 3 verse 16 to 18. Daniel chapter 3 verse, verse 3. Daniel chapter 3 verse 3. Daniel chapter 3 verse 16 I mean to 18. There you see these three Hebrew sons. They, were, they found themselves in a very serious situation. They knew that they were going to die if they don't compromise. But they said to the king, O oh king, let it be known to you. We will not bow down to your molten image. It doesn't matter what is going to be the consequence. We better, we better suffer for standing on our conviction. We believe what we're standing for. Ladies and gentlemen, let me tell you the truth here. I don't care whether there are, let the entire body of Christ in Nigeria vote for the Muslim Muslim ticket or vote for the Muslim Christian ticket. I am not going to vote for Muslim Christian ticket. I'm not going to vote for Muslim Muslim ticket. I'm going to vote for Christian Muslim ticket. That's what I'm, that is my stand. Yes, let it look like I may lose it. Let me lose, but stand on the righteous side. It looked like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they lost it, but they never lost it, friend. God may be silent over your action, but stand on your conviction. Believe in what you believe and know what is right and do not back down. It doesn't matter what, because there is a time when God is going to show up on you. And we saw at the end of the day that Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, they were thrown into the burning, burning furnace. And the scripture said to us, among the three, one appeared among them. God will always show up at the end of it all. Brave leaders are leaders who are willing to persevere through the trials of life. They are leaders that are ready to go through the trials of life, the hardship of life. Having strong faith in God. It doesn't matter the setup you've set them up. They are focused. They know that I believe in God. I believe in the awesome living God. God will never leave me alone. We saw that situation in the life of Daniel in Daniel chapter 1 and verse 20. Daniel chapter 1 and verse 20. There you see the scripture say to us, and in all matters of wisdom and understanding that the king inquired of them, he found them ten times better than all the magicians and the astrologers that we are all in the realms. So out of jealousy, the people said of Daniel. But look at the response of Daniel. In Daniel chapter 6 verse 10. Daniel chapter 6 verse 10, the Bible says that Daniel was willing to persevere in faith through God. He was willing to go through. Now when Daniel knew when Daniel knew that the writing was signed, 
He went into his own house and his windows being open in his chamber towards Jerusalem. He knelt upon his knees three times a day and he prayed and gave thanks, not complained. He would have been telling God, Father, I am doing all of these things for your name. Why did you allow me in the midst of all? I made sure that I prove you. I am your faithful child. Why would you allow them to handle me this way? The Bible says in it all, he gave thanks to God. Brave leaders are men and women that are willing to persevere in the midst of trials and hardship of life that is brought to them through the faith that they have in God. Number four, brave leaders are leaders who are ready to sacrifice their comfort and convenience in order to free their land and their people from the bondage and the attack of the enemy. Men and women that are ready to make a sacrifice. Oh my God. My prayer within this period is, oh God, build a people for yourself. That will, be, that will be so courageous and brave enough to make a sacrifice, to discomfort themselves in order to be able to rescue the land from the hands of the wicked. Judges chapter 5, the Bible testified to us about a woman called Deborah. A woman, Judges 5 and verse 7. The Bible says that the parts were not used. The inhabitants of the villages ceased. There was no more village life. The seas in Israel until that I, the Bora, arose. There arose a mother in Israel. A courageous woman, brave woman. She was ready to discomfort herself in order to read the troop of God for them to win the battle and rescue their land from the oppressors. Brave leaders are people of character. They are men and women that are outstanding in their lifestyles and their consecration. Men of character. You check them up, down, up, down. You realize that they are men of proven character. They don't change by the size of the container you bring. They just remain who they are in God, in Christ. They maintain a high level of consecration. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 24, Hebrews eleven twenty four. 24, the Bible says that he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter by faith. That's a brave man. When he was come to, yes, he refused. Very strong in character. I can't imagine now if these people had the privilege of sitting with kings and governors. Some people that followed me to one of the farms I went a few weeks ago. And the owner of the farm stood up before the people in the congregation and he was telling them because he was in the palace, he was in the presidency that time. And every time I walk into the presidency and they are there with me, I will go in there and declare the mind of God to the president and I'll find my way out. Not asking the president for a contract or a job. And it was a shocker to all of them, not one, not twice. So he was telling the people just a few weeks ago, I remember one of these times the president had me for a dinner. We sat down to eat. And while I took the thing to start eating, I heard a voice say, drop it. And I dropped the spoon. The president looked at me and said, sir, why? I said, I'm okay. Thank you very much. I walked out of that villa with no, with no dime. The Bible says that he refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter. They are men, men and women of outstanding consecration. Number six, brave leaders are people that face great challenges with uncommon belief in God. Brave leaders. They are men and women that face great, 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 big challenges with uncommon faith. And come and believe in God. They overcome the challenges of life by faith, by endurance. When you see them succeeding and they are moving on, that does not mean that they have not made challenges in life. I've made a thousand and one challenges in life. But one thing has kept me going. I know that my Redeemer lived it. You see, anytime you obey God, 
He does something that you can never pay for. Because you're obedient to the voice of God in the midst of challenges. You refuse to compromise your faith. Isaiah chapter 12 verse 2. Isaiah chapter 12 verse 2. Surely God is my salvation. I will trust him and not be afraid. For the Lord Jehovah is my strength. The Lord is my song. That's why there's not one second of my life where I have looked pitied to be pitied. I have never, never subscribed to men to try to tell me, hey, yeah, sorry, eh? I face the challenges of life with absolute faith in God. When I was a Muslim, there is this natural belief we had. If I had that kind of faith when I was an unbeliever, what about now that I am not just a servant, Abdullah, I am the son of God, Ibn Hu. Surely, come on everybody shout it three times. Surely, my God is my salvation. Say it again loud and clear. Surely, my God is my salvation. Say it for the last time. Surely, my God is my salvation. I will trust him. I will trust him. Even in the middle and in the midst of death, I will trust him. I trust him. I will not be afraid. A few days ago, if I was somebody that easily fears, oh my God, I tell you the truth, I would have shut down a lot of my trips, a lot of the activities I'm doing. My PA came to me, of course, with all the write-ups people were writing, especially from the Islamic community, and some people targeting my life. Some people say they had a dream, I was killed. Some people say they had a dream, I was shut down. And then, the, of course, the other people were writing, threatening that anywhere they find me, they should kill me. Mm. So when he came also with the report, I just told him, I said, boy, shut down. I know who I believe. It's not the first time, it's not the second time, it's not the third time, it's not the fourth time, it's not the fifth time, it's not the sixth time, it's not the seventh time, it's not the eighth time, it's not the ninth time, it's not the tenth time that people thought I was dead, but I'm still alive. I'm still alive not because of my strength. I'm still alive not because of my wisdom. I'm still alive not because of my intelligence. I'm still alive because of the one that I'm hidden in. I'm hidden in Christ and Christ in God. If you want to touch El Buba, touch Christ. After you touch Christ, then you can touch me. I tell you the truth, when, when, when some people cut a little bit of the video of Jesus versus Muhammad, I didn't caption that Jesus versus Muhammad. But they took it and threw the thing all over the world. I said, oh God, some people here now, they want to put me in trouble. But I heard a voice said to me, when the word of truth goes forth, it has the power to disarm lies. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid. When the late Obadiah was alive and was called by the DSS, and of course they got through to me, and I spoke with him on phone, I could hear some little bit of fear. And I said to him, Size up, brother. Get down. Fear not. They are throwing the darts of fear. You are speaking the truth. And you can go listen to his videos and his broadcasts and the things he said. Exactly they are playing out. Some people said they were going to be together with us in the morning for all of us to walk to the DSS office. Isn't it so amazing? We got out and then at the end of the day I didn't see 99% of all of those people who said they were going to appear. I led our brother through into the DSS office and we got in there. Look at the people that were looking for me. Now I took myself to the lion's den. I know who I believe in. 
I am not afraid. When the challenges of life come, I face them squarely with the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now I'm going to give somebody just two minutes to shout, I believe in God. Say it again. I am unmovable. I am unshakable. Can I hear the loudest? Amen. Well, at the end of the day, the man that we went and they wanted to set the arrest, it ended up the other way around. They all stood up. And the man right inside his office knelt down for me to pray for him. What is that telling you? There is an invisible hand that goes with the children of God that fear not but have faith in God. Number seven, quickly, brave leaders are ordinary people. They are ordinary people who made decisions that transformed them into extraordinary religions. Ordinary men and women. Deborah, ordinary woman. But she chose and made a decision that made her an extraordinary woman. You talk about David, ordinary man, coming from a background that he was less privileged. But yet, he was able to change history. You talk about Daniel, ordinary man, slave boy, but he was able to become an extraordinary. The Bible says his performance was 10 times better than every other person. A man. In James chapter 5 and verse 17, James 5, 17, the Bible says, Elias was a man that was subject like you and I. Elias, Elijah was a man subject to like passion as we are. It's just ordinary like us, but look at it. And he prayed, he made a decision. And he prayed earnestly, not casually, not inconsistently. Earnestly, that it might not rain. And it rained not. On the earth by the space of three years and six months. Wow. Ordinary man was able to affect his own generation. I decree over somebody, not everybody here, and all my viewers around the world, I decree over your life, you will make history. Your word, your word, your word will command the sun, will command the moon, will command the land to stand still in order to honor God in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. I see you coming out as a giant. I see you. He could pray, let there be no rain. And there was no rain three years. A man, a man like me, locked heaven and put the key in his pocket. Three years. Then you will need to come up. And understand that it is not Superman that we are ordinary men with the mind of a super God. We are ordinary men who tell you that God cannot use you. Who is that devil telling you that you're coming from a disadvantaged background? Yes, true. You're coming from a disadvantaged background, but you can change it. I believe number eight finally brave men and leaders they are people of conviction they are men and women of determination unshaken by the storms of life men men and women of conviction Unshaken by the storms of life. Rather, they use the storms of life to form their successes. They use the storms of life to ride on to fulfill their dreams. Men of conviction. Men of conviction in the middle between life and death. 
He had a conviction in God. And Job said, even if he slay me, I will yet trust him. The wife came to him in Job chapter 2. You read the storms that the man went through from verse 1 to 11. Again, there was a day when the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord. And Satan came also among them to present himself before the Lord. And after that, it was tragedy upon tragedy coming upon a man. But in the midst of it all, his faith was unshaken. He had faith in God. He lost his children, lost his businesses. He lost all the houses. He lost everything. His body was afflicted. And the wife came to him and said, are you still keeping to that your conviction? Why, why would you not for a, for, for a moment change? Just look at all that has befallen us. Are you still having confidence in this God? For me, my mind is changing. My mind is changing about this God. I'm beginning to have doubt if he really exists. Cursed him. And this is what he said. But he said unto her, Thou speaketh as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God and shall we not receive evil? In all this did not Job sin with his lips. How many of us have so much offended God with what we say because of the challenges of life? Somebody sent me a letter recently. I read the letter and it said, Sir, I know I believe God. I've been following you for more than 20 years. But, sir, please, I'm begging you. You know, the political situation right now, it's good that we don't go for Muslim, Muslim ticket. But why don't you think that the person who has the chances of winning the election is Atiku, sir? Please, I'm begging you, why don't you align with Atiku? I received a phone call from one of the top church leaders, a phone call from one of the top church leaders, and he said to me, why don't us think about renegotiating it? And I said, renegotiate what, sir? If we miss it, we're gone. If I'm going to be the last man standing, I will stand. But ladies and gentlemen, I'm not the only last man standing. There are thousands that are standing. I believe. What is the attitude of this man quickly in the next 15 minutes? Let me see how far I can go tomorrow. I'll continue with the attitude and the example of brave people. Let's take example of this man, ordinary people like you and I, and how they were able to change history. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 19, we see the example of a man called Noah. So what is the lesson about Noah in Genesis chapter, chapter 6 and verse 19? The Bible says that of every living thing of all flesh, two of every sort shall thou bring into the ark to keep them alive with thee, and they shall be male and female. God gave him an order on how to collect certain instruments and certain animals and bring them into the ark. But remember that when he was building the ark, people mocked him. People laugh at him. People say, what stupid thing are you doing? Now let me tell us one of the lessons from there about brave people. Leaders that are brave, they do what's, what is right even when they are alone. They are not crowd motivated. If the whole world was doing what was wrong, that did not deter Noah from doing what was right. He chose to be alone. I will stand to do God's will. 
Brave leaders are willing to get the job done even when they find themselves to be alone. Number two, example is Abraham. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 8 to 22. We won't be able to read the, all of that, but we'll see another example of an ordinary man like you and I. Brave man. What do you see there? God spoke to him. God told him and said, leave. Go to an uncertain destination. So what do you find about brave leaders? Brave leaders, they embrace the unknown. God, when he approached Abraham to go to a country, he knows nothing about. Abraham left his comfort zone in order to conquer his world. Brave leaders will always embrace that uncertainty because they know the truth. They know that God never fails. The promised land awaits them on the other side. Right now, we may begin the journey. People are saying, can Nigeria, the new Nigeria, ever be born? Yes, people that are not brave leaders, people that are not having the spirit of Abraham, will doubt the reality of a new Nigeria. But I believe in the new Nigeria. I believe that by the power of the Holy Spirit, every one of us, will see the new Nigeria. But you see, for us to be able to enjoy the new Nigeria, we must act like Abraham. The journey was uncertain. He left his comfort zone, left his father's house, left his community, left his people. Brave leaders embrace that uncertainty. Because they know the truth, the promised land of the new Nigeria awaits us on the other side. Now we may not see it physically, but it's there. Abraham saw a city whose foundation and builder is the Lord. Everybody was seeing tent, Abraham was seeing cities. My God, I love that. Everybody else was seeing Abraham as a barren man without a child, but Abraham was seeing himself as father of nations. When he saw Melchizedek and he came around and the Bible says and he brought the gift and the tithe, the Bible says he could prophesy into his great-grandchildren. Though Levi was still in the loins, Abraham dedicated the priesthood, seeing what others have not seen. Number three example is an ordinary young boy called Joseph. Genesis 37, verse 12 to 36. You read the story about Joseph, a brave leader, a man that in spite of his circumstances, he held on to the promises of God. The story of Joseph is so pathetic from the beginning. How his own brothers in Genesis 37 set him up out of envy. His brothers, his own brothers, they sold him a very pity one. He went through a tough situation. Where he went to serve, the wife of the man set him up. He was thrown into prison. But one thing you find about brave leaders is this. They have a vision that sustains them. Even while Joseph was going through what he was going through, not for one day did Joseph open his mouth to complain about the betrayal of his brothers. His vision was able to keep him through the difficult times. When he was thrown into prison, the Bible says, and God was with him. At the end of the day, he ended up becoming the prime minister. And his brothers came around and he turned to the brothers and said, I don't want you to worry yourself. Everything you taught and everything you taught to do against me that was harmful, God was behind it. He was working out things so that today I will be your deliverer. Brave leaders, they endure the challenges of life. Number four, example is Moses. Moses found himself at the burning bush in Exodus chapter 3. God was looking for a man that would set his people free. You realize that God has never used angels to do the supernatural things on earth. He has always used ordinary people to do the supernatural things. God used Noah, man like you and I. God used Abraham, man like you and I. God used Joseph and a youth just like you. And here is Moses' stammerer. 
When God came to Joseph, to Moses and told him, I said, I want you to go and deliver my people. Moses said, you know, how can I? And there was an engagement in terms of discussion with God. And God said to him, hey, relax yourself. I want you to go and confront the Pharaoh. He knew who Pharaoh was. But finally he said, I will answer the call. Sir, when I'm going, who do I tell them? And the Lord said, tell them. I am that I am. And when you get there, tell Pharaoh, it's time to let my people go. Brave leaders are freedom fighters. There are people that are willing to step up and lead in the midst of oppression. They're ready to say, it's time to let my people go. 2023, I am decreeing and declaring it's time to let Nigeria go. But we are not waiting for 2023, sir. We're starting it now. We're starting the mobilization now. I went somewhere and somebody looked at me and said, sir, we believe in your vision. We believe in what God is doing through you. But do you know that we need a lot of money to get this job done? I said, that's what you believe. You need a lot of money. But when God is on your side, God is the money you need. In all of these men that I quoted, tell me. Tell me what kind of money will Moses mobilize that is bigger than Pharaoh's. Tell me what money can Shadrach and Meshach and Abednego, what kind of money can they mobilize to put air condition to quench that fiery furnace? Tell me what kind of money would Daniel be able to put together to be able to bribe the judges so that he will not be thrown into the lion's den? What God is looking for is for men to know who they are and to rise up and then he will back them up. Tell me what kind of money, what kind of armory, what kind of weapon would be greater than what Saul had and all his generals that, that David will go to confront a Goliath. What a stone. It wasn't the stone that killed Goliath. It was the fate of a courageous young boy that God saw that he's willing to set his own people free. Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that has been here intimidating this, my people? And who is this uncircumcised Philistine defiling the army of the Lord? Today, your head will go down. God said, I love you. I'm going to back you up. And there was mobilization of angels. I know that it is so easy for you to forget because it is the nature of man to sometimes forget. Some time ago in the city of Jaws, there was a crisis that erupted and bombs were flying everywhere. Bullets were being fired everywhere. We were in this temple having our convention and every church was closed down, but we still maintained the convention. One of my sons in the Lord came from Abuja with his own brand new G, beautiful car. I got out. I said, give me the car. And I went to the battlefield where there was exchange. I wind the glass down. And when these people on the other side saw me, they said, ah, help me, ah, help me, ah. And <laughs> it was not El Buba. The angels of the Lord, the man of war appeared to save his children. Who will go for us? Who will stand for us? I want to save the nation, but I am looking for a man. Stand on your feet. Bravely 
leaders. Brave men. Brave women. Until I, Deborah, Abu. Shapara Godekeri Arashadarara. Limbro Kosaka Labraga de Kesheka Labrabarada. Limbroko Sokara Barabaro Shatala Rako de Karada. Lift up your two hands in the name of Jesus. In the next two minutes, I'm going to allow you to enter into that realm of bravery. Brave people pray with authority. They pray with conviction. They pray alive in God. So in the next two minutes, just lift your voice. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Saturate your mind. Saturate yourself. Engage your spirit, man. Raga de kala preke de ke de ke de ke de waha. Randa da 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 da. Raga da te 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 ta bo sha ta ta pa. Rajan tendele moko santa yalaba. Woo! Sha ta 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 daba. Who will go for us? I am looking for a man. I am looking for a woman. This is the time that Nigeria need an intercessor. This is the time that Nigeria need genuine ministers of God, genuine servants of God, men and women that will stand out in every location to say it's time to reclaim our inheritance. It's time to let God's people. Shakalabaros. Rembakadabarabaro shatalabaragada. Shandana mekonde le makanda de bokonda de boshayada. I give you the next three minutes. Pray like a brave prayer warrior. They are not casual. They are not psychedelic. They are not lukewarm. They steer themselves. Shaka da kabaroa. Oh God, where is that woman that looks like Deborah? Until I, Deborah, rose. She was a judge. She was a prophetess. She was a housewife. But yet she left her comfort to fight a war, to reclaim the nation, to restore joy to the villages again. Makata baka yanto rebaka so. Rakada kalabarabara. Rekada kalabarabara. Yango. Where are they, Elijah? Don't you know that this is your time? Elijah served his own generation. Daniel served his own generation. Shadrach, Meshach, and Merugo served their own generation. Joseph served his own generation. Nobody has an excuse here because you could see the age difference. You could see 75 year old man. You could see it, another man that was there, a man of over 70 years. You could see a young boy of 17 years. You could see another one of 30 years. God is raising a mighty army unto himself. I give you two extra million. Draw yourself through in the Holy Ghost. Generate your spirit. Steer your spirit unto privilege. No, God is not looking for miracle Lucas. Miracle of the people. Miracle Jesus. God is looking for men that will do the miracle themselves. God is not looking for people that are looking for breakthroughs, but people that are going to break through themselves. God is not looking for men and women that are complete in the church. God is looking for men that are having the warrior mentality. That's why God is looking for men like Noah. If you can only believe, others may not believe. The world around you may not believe. But God wants you to build an ark, something that has never happened before. God wants us to raise a new nation. A new nation is about to be born. God is wanting to I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. I believe God. This is your generation. This is not the time of a parking the It is your own time. This is not the time. Not Bishop Benson in the Hosa. It is your own time. 
This is your own generation. This is not the time of Catherine Thomas. It is your own time. He cut her about her Satayalaba, but Satanaba for Yanaba. Drama Satanabara, but 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 Satanabara, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, we are not a generation of people that are waiting for people to make it happen in their life, but rather we are the people that are looking for every opportunity to make things happen. They want to make their contribution. They are very proactive men and women. They are shut up. 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 They are Jesus, in the mighty name we pray. Amen. This meeting, I'm not going to be praying so much for you, but you'll be praying through for yourself. I realize until a man come to a place in his life, where he's ready to fight it through. It doesn't matter how many people want to help you to fight. If you are not ready to fight, you will never win the battle. Mm. Until you arise in your womb, until you arise in your spirit. Look at their ages. 17, 20, 30, 75. Nobody has an excuse. Men, women. Listen to one lady, young girl. If I perish, I perish. But my people cannot continue in this slavery. If nothing grieves your spirit, looking at the picture of the flogging of these people in the bush. We have asked God to send his angels. But hear me, it takes brave people to confront them. One of the young boys that was holding his own gun, he said, I need to go to the prison. If people that have no hope, could this be brave? What about me that have eternal life? I decree today every form of lukewarmness in your life. I ask the fire of God to change it away. Amen. Lift up your two hands, one mama who shakabayada. Just a church bunch of people that do not know their conviction. Put your two hands on your head. Which Islamic, which Islamic scholar did you see them come out with their hijab, with their what have you, backing Muslim, Muslim ticket, even though it's their own? Don't you know it is a slight? Mm. Even if they hired this man, don't you know it's a slight? Mm. To use your, your identity to tell the world that we are money people. They are mon money, money, is it money mongers? That we can be influenced with money. This is the thing that God, uh, David, angry in his spirit. And he saw church, we are just holding their hand, complaining among themselves. He said, this nonsense must stop. Hmm. 
When I granted the interview to punch newspaper, calls were coming, people were saying, so why are you not thinking about your family? I said, which family? Hmm. He said, your children and your wife. I said, go and ask them. Before they came into my life, I was a radical for Jesus. Mm. Now that they came into my life, the, the, the radicalism increased. I am a Jesus maniac. Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I can't take it for oppression for a people that have all it takes to be trodden down as if they don't matter. No, I have the spirit of my father. The spirit of my father hates injustice. Mm. Mm. Every one of you here today, any devil of Chochenianism that has engulfed your life and make you so lukewarm, so casual, I command that you break out! Break! Break! break In the name of Jesus. Amen. Let me close with this. I vow, I vow to the Lord, if nobody will do it, I vow. Mm. In the next coming months, when campaign starts, I will go to campaign ground. Mm. For the first time, mm. I will be in the campaign ground. This word keep coming to me. Who will go for us? Mm. Don't you know that 90% of your prayer requests will be answered by one good leader? Mm. That's right. One good leader. One good leader. Comes into leadership. 90% of all our prayer requests. It's true. All our fasting will be answered. That's right. I'm telling you. But it takes courage to confront these monsters. <sighs> Can you imagine somebody that cannot, is by age, when he was younger as governor of Lagos, no problem. But age, age is telling on him. He's already beginning to have dementia. That even to call the name of the party, he was he struggling. They say African instead of ABC. <laughs> and it's, it's so amazing. He has a son. He's a son, no matter what you talk about. He was the one that brought Professor Osibanjo to Lamlight in leadership. He picked him from the classroom. As a professor. And when Osibanjo came as a commissioner of, of, of Attorney General, he transformed the judiciary of Lagos. Transform it. Nigerian government had to borrow from that. You have that sharp man. Would you not back up your son as a kingmaker? I must be president. Yet you will see stupid, stupid. Wow, wow, Nigerians dancing for him, even shake it themselves. Jagabako, Jagaba. Curse! Curse be upon any church person that will cast their vote for this wicked man. Their generation will never leave. When they were doing the killing, I supported Atiku. They said, why did you have support Atiku 2019? I did that because that was a better alternative because it was a not, not matter. But in the midst of all this killing, when did Atiku carry a chopper to go and condole Commiserate, encourage the people. When did he come out publicly to say, Fulani, stop what you're doing? 
Now, you want to bring him into power. Say, say, Okowa is a Christian. Don't you know what it means to be a president? He's executive president. Vice president is a spear tire. That's why with all that Osi Banjo did in less than three weeks, he changed the economy, dollar, crash. Security started going down. The Dolo man came. He took over and reversed everything that Osi Banjo did. Because it is executive power. Now we are going to march in the coming days. We are going to take over the streets. Every one of you that is standing here, your house will become a cell house. For the new Nigeria. Lift up your hands in the Jesus name. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We raise our hands unto you for a transformation in our lives as we reclaim the soul of our nation. And I pray for everyone here from this night. Possess every soul. Possess every spirit. Possess every heart. Possess every life here. In the mighty name of Jesus. And if you believe that God is raising you to be a mighty warrior, let your amen be the loudest in the house.